أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسه ومن ضل فإنما يضل عليها ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وما كنا معذبين حتى نبعث رسولا وإذا أردنا أن نهلك قرية أمرنا متر فيها ففسقوا فيها فحق عليها القول فدمرناها تدميرا وكم أهلكنا من القرون من بعد نوح وكفى بربك بذنوب عباده خبيرا بصيرا من كان يريد العاجلة عجلنا له فيها ما نشاء لمن نريد ثم جعلنا له جهنم يصلها مذموما مدحورا ومن أراد الآخرة وسعى لها سعيها وهو مؤمن فأولئك كان سعيهم مشكورا The topic of my dars today is the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wassalam and the verses which I have just recited before you are verses 16 to 20 of Surah Bani Israel which is chapter 17 of the Holy Quran the translation of these verses is as follows he who follows the right way follows it only for the good of his own soul and he who goes astray goes astray only to his own loss and no bearer of burden shall bear the burden of another and we never punish until we have sent a messenger and when we intend to destroy a township we command its people who live in comfort to adopt the way of righteousness but they transgress therein so the sentence of punishment becomes due against it and we destroy it with utter destruction how many generations did we destroy after Noah? And thy Lord suffices as Noah and seer of the sins of his servants. Whoso desires the present life, we hasten for him therein of its provision what we will, for such of them as we please. Then we appoint hell for him. He shall burn therein condemned and rejected. And whoso desires the hereafter, and strives for it as it should be striven for, and is a believer, these are the ones whose striving shall be duly appreciated. Now these verses are talking about Allah's punishment that falls upon people. In the very beginning here, in, the, in verse 16, Allah explains why he destroys people. He says that he never punishes people until he has sent a messenger. Now, we see that Muslims today are in a very dire situation. All over the Muslim world, whether you look at Syria, Kashmir, Libya, Iraq, Iran, Burma, wherever you look, all over the world Muslims are in a very pitiful state. They are dependent upon the very nations who are at the forefront when it comes to spreading propaganda against the religion of Islam. 
So they depend on them. And they are being punished in different ways by the disbelievers, by people who are not Muslims. Not only that, they are also fighting each other and they are killing each other. And this is happening all over the Islamic world and even beyond. Now we see that the Muslims in general have not recognized the promised Messiah and Mahdi who was sent by Allah to reform their, their religion and to bring them back to a good state of spirituality, morality and well-being in this world. And as a consequence of this, they are suffering all kinds of difficulties and torments all over the world, as I had just said. So our duty as Ahmadi Muslims is to draw their attention to this, and especially using the, the, this verse and other similar verses of the Holy Quran to make them reflect on the reasons for which they are now facing this terrible predicament. Because Allah says he, does nev he never punishes people until he has sent a messenger. Now, we see that the, the ulama or the um, religious divines of the Muslims, whether it be the Shias or the Sunnis or even the Sufis, when they are confronted with the message of the Imam Mahdi salam, the Promised Messiah salam, their reaction usually is that they will oppose him. Some of them quietly, some of them very viciously, but they oppose and that's what they do. Now, what we see is that they spend a lot of their time trying to turn their followers away from the Promised Messiah salam, and his message. They do their utmost to denigrate the Promised Messiah salam, to mock his words, to mock his person, and to turn their followers away from anything that has to do with his community or his teachings. And they waste a lot of their time telling people to beware of this so-called false prophet. Now, one point which we really must, if we love them, and we say love for all, hatred for none, and out of all the people in the world, according to the conditions of the bayat that we have taken, the Pledge of Allegiance on the hand of the Promised Messiah we have to have special regard, we have to have regard for all creatures of God, but special regard for the followers of Muhammad sallallahu of the greatest prophet of all, the chief of the messengers. We should have special regard for them. So if we do really have that special regard and special love for them, then our, our foremost duty would be that we should inform them of what has been happening and make them see this verse and those which are similar to it, as I'd said, so that they realize what they're doing and what is going to befall them, what's going to happen to them if they persist in their rejection of the messenger sent by Allah. So we see that their ulama waste a lot of time telling them that be careful, don't listen to this man, he is, na'udhu billah min dhalik, a false prophet. But all the while that they are saying this, all kinds of punishments are falling upon them internally and externally. And they're a people who are hated and despised all over the world. They despise each other and other peoples and nations despise them. Now, not only is there uh, persecution and torture and killings within the Islamic world, now we see the phenomenon of Islamophobia as well, which has been spreading and increasing day after day all over the non-Muslim world, and in particular in Western countries. These are all forms of punishment. Now, had this not been punishment, then what else would, could it have been? Is this the way that Allah is 
rewarding them for having rejected a so-called false prophet. If he, if really this pro, this uh, prophet were false, then surely Allah would have to reward them in a different way. He wouldn't be inflicting them with all these torments, these wars, all the different things which are befalling them, which the calamities which we could see every single day in the in the news. We see it. We have been seeing it for several years. And actually, this has been going on since the coming of the Promised Messiah. All, call, for all kinds of calamities have been befalling the Islamic world. The Ottoman Empire was dismantled. Muslims' nations were carved up by other nations. They were shared out between the superpowers of that time. They lost their, uh, the control of their own nations. And even today, they are economically and politically enslaved by other nations. So they have fallen into a terrible state. And this is all linked to the coming of the promised Messiah, salam, whom they have rejected. So we should ask them, then if this man is God forbid, this man who's pro proclaimed to be the promised Messiah, if God forbid he really is false, then where is the true messenger who Allah must have sent somewhere else? Because he never punishes a people unless there's a, there's a messenger sent by him. So they, they should be spending their energies instead of uh, telling people, oh, don't listen to this man, he's a false prophet. They should rather be spending it on showing us where the true prophet is, the true messenger who's been raised by Allah and the, and the one that they have rejected because they're being punished. So we see that uh, they're not reflecting on the verses of the Quran. They're not seeing what Allah himself is saying. Now we see that Allah says that when we intend to destroy a township, we command its people who live in comfort to adopt the way of righteousness, but they transgress therein. So the sentence of punishment becomes due against it. So we destroy it with utter destruction. Now, here again, Allah is saying that he will not destroy the people unless the message has reached them and has reached the, the whole township. Maybe some might not hear of it, but most of the people will hear and especially the leaders will hear of it. So today, as uh, those who are on social media will be aware, there are there is a lot of talk about the Ahmadiyya Jamaat, about the Promised Messiah, about Ahmadis in general and our beliefs among the uh, Pakistanis in particular, the Indian Muslims and some others, but mostly in Pakistan. And we can say that there's hardly a person in Pakistan who has not heard, at least heard about the person who has proclaimed to be the Imam Mahdi and Promised Messiah alayhi salam. So if they continue in their rejection of him, and their rejection is really vile. Those who have been reading the comments which are coming out uh, online on, on social media regarding the Promised Messiah's person, alayhi salam, regarding his teachings, his community, his, his uh, khulafa, his caliphs, you'll see the extent of the hatred and the, the sheer bile that is being poured out by these people in front of everybody, it's like they have no shame left. So when a people reaches this state of uh, of hatred and evil, then there is little that can prevent Allah's punishment from befalling them, a greater punishment than what they've seen already. So this is why it's very important for us to tell those people who still have some sense of logic inside them, who still can reason a bit, who haven't been poisoned beyond repair that they should sit down and reflect on what is happening. Who is that messenger they have rejected for them to be suffering so badly all over the Muslim world and beyond today? They should sincerely and seriously reflect on this. Now we'll see that um, when uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, made his appearance in the Holy Land, the Jews in the, in the majority, we can say, of, of the Jews in the Holy Land, rejected him in the beginning. And the reasons that they put forward included this, which was one of the main reasons, that it was written in the books of the prophecies that 
Elijah, the prophet Elijah, peace be upon him, had to return. They believed that he had been taken up alive into the heavens and he was going to come back down again. And it was only after that that the Messiah would appear. So they asked him, you say you're the Messiah, so where's Elijah? And he told them that I tell you he has already come, but you haven't re recognized him. You've done with him what you what you wished. But the disciples knew, and they said that it's John the Baptist. And it was Yahya, meaning. And before he was born, as uh, those who know the Bible will know, the an angel appeared to his mother saying that um, that you will be you will bear a son and he will walk in the power and spirit of uh, and the spirit and power of Elijah so he will be the fulfillment of that prophecy which they did not understand they took it literally the other reason that they rejected Jesus was that he used to call himself in the, uh, by way of metaphor the son of god whereas he didn't mean it literally and he explained as much when they confronted him about this. But they said, because of this, we reject you. So for these two main reasons, and others, of course, they rejected him. And they have been crying for their Messiah for thousands of years. He still hasn't appeared. But what happened was, when they rejected him, 40 years later, they were dispossessed of the Holy Land. It was taken away from them. Now we see when the promised Messiah appeared, they rejected him and they gave some reasons too. So they said that it is written that there is no prophet after Prophet Muhammad who said, La Nabi Yabadi, which literally means there is no prophet after me. So how dare you call yourself a prophet? You can't be a prophet, it's impossible. So this is false, so we reject you. And they also said that, and anyway, Jesus had been taken up into the heavens, peace be upon him, physically, and he has to come back down. So your claim is invalid anyway, because you aren't that Jesus who went up to the heavens and who came back down. You're somebody else. You're from. You're one of us. So for these two main reasons, and they also had other reasons, of course, they rejected him. So we see a very great similarity between the two messiahs. And this is why the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ had said that his people would become like the Jews. They would walk in their footsteps. They would resemble each other like two shoes in the same pair resemble each other. They would do similar things. They would commit the same kinds of mistakes. So the biggest mistake that the Jewish people committed was they rejected their Messiah because they had interpreted their prophecies too literally. And today we see that the Muslims are guilty of exactly the same thing. Now, just like the Jews were turned out of the Holy Land, they were dispossessed of the Holy Land 40 years after Jesus, peace be upon him, had preached in the Holy Land. Similarly. The Muslims, 40 years after the passing of the Promised Messiah, were dispossessed of the Holy Land as well. So these are all signs for people who reflect, and we should tell them, look what's happened. Don't you see? This is why he was called the Messiah ibn Maryam. He was the Messiah son of Mary. Because he, his life, his, uh, the incidents and events in his life are very similar to those of the life of Jesus, peace be upon him. And the the uh, the reactions shown by by his people are very much like the reactions shown by the people of Jesus, peace be upon him, as well. So this is why he was also called the Messiah ibn Maryam. And if they say, well, we say it's the same person who has to come back down, then you can also show them the two hadith in the Sahih al-Bukhari, where Jesus is described by the Prophet Muhammad sallam when he saw in a vision. Uh, in his Miraj, during his Miraj, he saw the different prophets, the great prophets in the heavens, and he gave a physical description of the Jesus he saw there, and he said that he's of a reddish fair color, so kind of a, a rosy colored person, with curly hair. But when he described 
the Messiah who was to come at the time of the Dajjal, he had to ask who he was. He was so physically different in his dream, which was recorded also in the Sahih al-Bukhari, as I said, that he actually had to ask who the person was. And then he was told he is the Messiah, son of Mary. But this one was of brown color and he had lank hair. So it, you can see straight away that th these are two diff physically different people. So these things should be shown to the Muslims so that they understand that they had misinterpreted their prophecies and they are waiting for the same person whom they believed had gone up to the heavens, just like the Jews are waiting and still are waiting, by the way, uh, for Elijah, who they thought had gone up to the heavens physically, to come back down physically. So these things have to be told to them. Now, we can see that, the, that Allah is saying here that if they follow the right way, they will follow it for the good of their own soul. And no bearer of burden shall bear the burden of another. So this is one other reason why these people don't accept the Promised Messiah. It's because they believe that their ulama will bear their burdens. They think that if they follow them, then on the day of judgment, they'll be in the clear. They'll say, well, we entrusted all our matters pertaining to, to the religion, the deen, and of iman, of the faith, to our religious leaders, to our ulama, al-mashayikh, the imams. So they are here to vouch for us now. Allah said, no. No bearer of burden shall bear the burden of another. Each one of you will bear his own or her own burden. So each one of you has the duty to find out where the truth is. Find out why Allah is punishing you. Where is the Messiah that he sent, the, the messenger that he sent? Because of whom, because of rejecting whom, you are now being tormented so badly. But Allah says that if you desire the hereafter and strive for it, as it should be striven for, then your striving will be duly appreciated. So Allah is giving hope here to these people to tell them that if you accept this man, and yes, it will be difficult. Some people will hate you. Some people may persecute you. They may deprive you of your rights. But this is what happens when a messenger comes. It's always the case. The whole Quran tells us, gives us this lesson and tells us this story of how a messenger comes. People reject him. Some people accept him. And the ones who reject punish them torment them. But then Allah also torments them in much worse ways. This is what's happening to the Muslims now where they're being decimated in some places. Hundreds of thousands, millions of them have already been killed by war and, th and things which have, uh, are related to situations that are related to the war that has been occurring in their countries. So they really have to reflect upon this. Now, um, the promised Messiah salam, himself has addressed the people, knowing that these uh, ulama, or maulvis as he calls them, will be a serious impediment in the way of their accepting him. So in his book, Nishani Asmani, or the Heavenly Sign, he writes, Here I would also like to preach and urge those seekers of truth who fear divine punishment, not to follow the Maulavis of this age without making proper inquiries. And he says, they should beware of them, as the Holy Prophet وسلم, has himself warned against the Maulavis of the latter days, meaning the ulama of the latter days. And they should not be bewildered by their edicts as this is nothing new. If they have any doubt about my humble person, or if they genuinely doubt the validity of my claim, then let me show them an easy way of resolving the matter, which, if Allah so wills, can satisfy a seeker after truth. First of all, after sincere repentance, the seeker should offer two rak'at of prayer at night. He should recite Surah Yasin in the first rakat and in the second, after reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas 21 times, 
he should recite Durud, that is the prayer for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Istighfar 300 times. He should then pray to Allah in these words, O Allah, the Omnipotent and Ever-Merciful, You are aware of the unseen and we are not. The favoured and the rejected and the false and the truthful cannot hide themselves from thy sight. We therefore most humbly pray to thee to disclose to us the true status of this man who claims to be the promised Messiah and the Mahdi السلام, and the Mujaddid of the present age. Is he true or false? Is he the favoured one or is he rejected and forsaken by thee? Out of thy grace disclose to us the truth about him either through a revelation, a vision, or a dream, so that if he is a rejected one, we may not go astray by accepting him. And if he is from thee, we may not be ruined by denying and affronting him. Save us from every kind of trial, for thou alone hast every power. Amen. And the Promised Messiah Salam continues saying, Perform this istikhara for at least two weeks, but with an absolutely free mind. Because when a man who is full of spite and malice and is overpowered by mistrust seeks information through a dream about a man he thinks very ill of, Satan appears, and according to the darkness of his heart, Satan puts misleading and dark thoughts into his mind. Hence, his condition becomes worse than before. Therefore, if you want to receive information from Allah the Exalted, then you should wash your heart absolutely clean from malice and animosity. You should free yourself from all inclinations of the self and divesting yourself of the bias of love as well as animosity Beg for his light and guidance. He shall, in, co- in keeping with his promise, send a light that will be free from the smoke and dust of human misgivings. Therefore, O ye seekers of truth, do not be tempted and misled by what these Maulavis say. Rise and seek help from the Omnipotent, the Almighty, the All Knowing, and the Absolute Guide. And hearken. I have now conveyed to you the spiritual message also. The choice is now yours. Peace be on him who follows the guidance. And he signed his name after that. So we see that our duty as Ahmadis is to inform the general public of the situation that they are facing, to let them know that Allah has raised a messenger in this era and that it is also because of rejecting him that they are now facing all kinds of trials and tribulations and all kinds of sufferings. So if they want to save themselves and save their children from the, these terrible disasters and worse ones which are to come, they should hasten to, to perform this prayer of istikhara, which we should give them. As I said, it's in the book Nishani Asmani. You can see it on pages 66 and 67 on the alislam.org website. We should give them this prayer and let them try their earnest in, in their most sincere way to find out the truth from Allah himself. For if he has sent him, then he should know if he is true or not. May Allah enable us to do so and may Allah guide the millions of Muslims who are in this terrible situation now to the truth so that they too can be blessed with the light of truth and all the blessings which are attached thereto. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.